In this video, we're going to be walking through how to get started with backend workflows, because if you're not taking advantage of this powerful section of your editor, you're really limiting your app's capabilities and scalability, especially when it comes to scheduled workflows and integrations with outside systems. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is enable your app's backend workflows, which you can do from your editor here. By default, it is disabled. Now, uh, keep in mind that in order to run your backend workflows, you do need to be on a paid plan. You can set things up while on the free plan. So you're just going to see some messages warning you, letting you know that you won't actually be able to preview or test these out until you are on a paid plan. So just be mindful of that. All right, so the first place you want to go to here is your settings tab in your editor and then the API sub tab. This first area for public API endpoints is where you can enable your workflow API as well as your data API. We'll be focusing on the workflow uh, API and backend workflows today. Uh, and I'll also go over the, the difference between these two terms here. So you wanna check this box, okay? So what that's gonna do is expose your backend workflows area as well as um, open up access to your application's workflow API. Now, both of those types of things are going to live in the same place, and you can access those now if you go to your page drop down list here. The very bottom, you're now going to see, once you enable that checkbox, the back end workflows area. Okay, so I'm going to click on this here, and it's going to take me to my back end workflow. So now we're looking at an area that is very similar to your page workflows. Uh, you have these events that are going to trigger actions, right? If I click on one of these to open it up, you can add actions just like you would on your page workflows. Now, one of the biggest differences is that these are all on the server. They are uh, not connected to any specific page design that you have in your app. They can be triggered from a page workflow, but these all run server side, okay? They're not running on the browser. In fact, you'll notice here at the top uh, of the list of tabs, your design tab is disabled. Again, because there's no specific canvas, design canvas for me to uh, work with here because it's all server side. Now, here's the difference between the terms backend workflows and API workflow because you'll see both of them. The backend workflows is kind of a category of workflows that runs on the server, API workflows being one of them. Okay, if I go here to add a new backend workflow, you'll see that you actually have a few different types of event triggers, similar to how in your page workflows you can have, um, you know, button click events, input change events, uh, custom events, same concept, right? The backend workflow is just a category and the types of backend workflows include an API workflow where you make an API call to this endpoint. That's, you know, the a common example is if an external system wants to make a call to your app to trigger something in your app, that would be using an API workflow. Um, a recurring event, so Bubble has some built-in functionality to help you run things on a loop um, at some frequency, daily, monthly, things like that. Uh, and a database trigger event, so this is kind of a, a listening event where Bubble is waiting for some change to happen in your database so that you can immediately trigger a sequence of actions. Okay, you also have the ability to run custom events here, just like you can in page workflows. And if you have any plugins installed, you may find a few other capabilities get added here. At the end of the day, this is where you define things to run on the server. Really powerful because you can do things like scheduling things to run in the future. Uh, for example, if you wanted to send an email a few days ahead of when uh, a subscription ends, right, just to let your customer know, could be in a few days, could be in a few weeks, months, a year. Um, and the user doesn't have to be present, on, you know, they don't have to have the a page open in order for that to run. You just schedule one of these workflows to run at a certain date and time. Very, very helpful for, um, you know, uh, getting things automated. You can also set up uh, looping workflows or recursive workflows so that they happen on some frequency. So Bubble has a type of event that is kind of pre-built for that. You have a lot of flexibility uh, to create your custom, your own custom looping events. Great for bulk operations to modify a lot of data or if things need to happen, you know, kind of one by one in sequence. A lot of flexibility that you have here. This is a very powerful section that can really level up the, uh, you know, the scalability and just complexity of your application. 
Also note that you have a lot of options for protecting these events as well. You know, if you have an external system triggering one of your API workflows, you want to protect it. You want to make sure that only the right systems are allowed and it's not just a free for all to access these. So you do have some checkboxes here to help control the, the privacy and security. You can use conditions just like with everything else and really customize the whole thing to fit your needs. Um, an API workflow in general is usually going to be the thing that you add here because you can also trigger these internally. Like I said, you can trigger these from your own app. They don't always have to be exposed to the public um, if you don't plan on having any outside integrations. But an example of an outside app triggering your API workflows would be something like um, if you had a, an, an integration with Stripe for a payment gateway. And if you wanted to be notified anytime a credit card payment fails, or if a checkout is successful, or if there's a new subscription that was created, Stripe can send data to your app via the API request um, you know, to one of these endpoints here. And this can receive that information. And then you can do whatever you want with it create a database record, send an email, modify an existing record, you know, just trigger a sequence of actions and use that incoming data as a data source. And by the way, this is where you want to go to trigger one of your API workflows internally. I'm just going to use this uh, workflow here as an example. You'll go to custom events and then you'll use trigger API workflow or trigger API workflow on a list. This gives you a couple different options of how you want to run depending on what kind of data you're passing to the back end, um, if you're wanting to trigger it once or multiple times in a dynamic way. Um, notice that even within the back end workflows, I can still schedule back end workflows as well. These can even trigger themselves in order to create those looping uh, type of flows. Like I said, really powerful. There's a few other actions here that relate to API workflows. Um, uh, for example, canceling them. You know, if you're going to schedule something in the future, you can actually uh, save an ID for it and cancel it in case you want to discard it. Something in the data uh, environment changes where you no longer need it to run. So you have a lot of control there. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, definitely check out the content you see on the screen right now. These videos will help you better build and launch your app and a lot more quickly too.